Hello, hello, my people. Welcome back to this channel. I'm in such a good mood today because I'm going to be filming my fall lineup. I made a promise to myself that I would get this out before November, so I think that I'm just in time. And uh, I have a big old box of perfumes to show you guys, so stay tuned. So for the first category of this lineup, I'm going to talk about a fragrance that I wear after the shower that is just a quick, easy grab, go-to fragrance to help me start off my day. And this is a um, classic styled powdery floral fragrance from Chabot and it's called La Nuit Danse. And as you can see, this is one that I just spray liberally and just go on with everything that I need to get done that day, you know? It's just one of those out of the shower, um, enhancing that clean, soapy, yet very powdery feel that my mom is a fan of and that I'm also a fan of because it makes me, you know, it just makes me feel like I am clean and I have my ish together. <laughs> There isn't much more to say about this fragrance. This uh, just is that powdery feel with the violets, lots of floral notes, jasmine in here as well. And yeah, that classic talcum powder scent, if that's your vibe. So check it out. I do love this house, Shabu. I think that they have some really great, delicate scents with a lot of uh, lovely subtleties and very natural smelling as well. So next has been my video call fragrance for those conference calls since I am working from home as many of you might be doing as well. When it comes to the work environment and uh, the office, I like to wear a fragrance most of the time that has hints of pepperiness to it. I don't know why, but it just helps me feel more concentrated, more determined. It's like this mental trigger for me. So I like spicy, peppery scents and that are elegant and, you know, very likable because I'm gonna be walking into the office. So since my office now is at home, I still want to go for that feeling when I'm going to be dialing in for a conference call. I still want to make myself look presentable for that call and, you know, just maintain some sort of professionalism. So this is the kind of fragrance that makes me feel professional and it is none other than B683 by Marc-Antoine Barrois. This fragrance has been all over uh, Fragcom, all over the Fragosphere at the moment. And I absolutely understand why. The first time that I smelled this fragrance was actually by accident. And this was, I think it was a year ago. I've gone through a few samples of this one um, before I ended up buying a bottle. And it just makes me feel so good about myself. This is a fragrance that goes well with a suit. This is a fragrance that goes well with smart attire, workwear. And uh, this has leathery aspects. It's a very unique smelling fragrance, but yet familiar. It's really, really intriguing. And I am going to do a full review of B683, also comparing it to the newer fragrance from uh, Marc-Antoine Barrois and why it is that I chose this one. But uh, yeah, leather facets, spiciness, that pepperiness, um, just a wonderful mix that is very classic yet unique. Oh my God, I'm just repeating myself, aren't I? But B683 for those professional conference calls. Okay, so third, we have a fragrance that is, again, unusual, very unique, soft, yet has this intrigue. And it is uh, one of my latest additions to the family. This is Poudre de Liberté by Au Pays de Fleurs d'Oranger. It's such a long name. <laughs> this fragrance house I've had my eye on for a while. They are famous for their orange blossom scent, but then I tried out uh, the full line in samples and decided to go with this one because this stood out. This has a uh, vintage style feel to her. Some subtle dessert-like qualities as well. Kind of like a rice pudding or just something in that vein that is slightly powdery as well. I do get that cola vibe 
uh, to begin with initially, which I love. I think that I'm sort of um, collecting fragrances that have that cola opening because it, there's just something very nostalgic uh, and triggering to me about that scent. And I don't drink cola very often anymore, high in sugar, etc. But then I get that sugar fix through fragrance. <laughs> so Poudre de Liberté, I'm going to do a full review of this one after this video actually because this is just a fragrance that more people need to know about. If you are a fan of Arabi by Serge Lutens but uh, find that too cloying, then this is something in that lighter vein. This is really like a beautiful cloud of uh, that sweet dessert yet not like you really can't set your finger on what this actually smells like i find it to be a very unique offering so next we're moving more towards like a self-care category um fragrances that i have been gravitating towards when i want to just give myself some tender love and care there's so much going on at the moment the world is in chaos so it's important to just keep swimming as they say and so I wear fragrances such as Coromandel by Chanel. This is the x clay that I have. And this is actually the only version that I've tried of Coromandel that I was willing to shell out the money for. Chanel fragrances are probably the only ones or some of the few that I actually keep the boxes of because they're evergreen, baby. Like you're going to be able to sell these perhaps one day if you feel like it. I also just enjoy... Uh, the ritual of taking out this extrait from her box and you've seen this before. I've also done a full review of this, one of my first videos ever, but I've just really been loving the ritual of, you know, let me not spill this, the ritual of opening up an extrait and then dabbing it on. This might have to do with me just recently seeing my mom as well because she just loves these vintage bottles. And I just feel like a Hollywood starlet when I'm doing this. And I've just been indulging in body oils, uh, oils of all sorts, you know, atars and extras. And this one I just really love in the fall season. So go Mandel and I am good to go. I mean, there are people who complain about uh, the price. Yes, these are pricey. This one does not last, you know, super long. Scent first and then performance. And this is the version of Couramandel, like I said, that I enjoy the scent of the most. Now, if I want to continue feeling like royalty as I lounge on the couch or what have you, which is a lot these days, I will turn to my Taif Oud by Roja Parfum. And this is the Fortnum & Mason exclusive, but I believe they have a similar smelling fragrance that's in another line. The name slips my mind, but I'll have the information down below if I uh, remember it. But this is a Taif Rose for a god or goddess. It's just uh, so beautiful. And if you know the Thai froze, it just has a very unique scent to it. Um, kind of, you know, on the Middle Eastern lines with this very well blended, subtle oud quality to this. An inoffensive oud, nonetheless. And yeah, this is just uh, a gem, isn't it? Isn't she? Thai <laughs> oud by Roja. Moving along, we have a... Ylang Ylang Mimosa concoction that is again in the vintage direction and this is Farnesiana, I don't know how to pronounce this name, Farnesiana by Caron and this is just a indulgent yellow floral fragrance that is so sweet and lovely, you know, borderline gourmand. I don't go full gourmand territory for the most part um, because food is for eating. But this is a very classy floral that is very much sweetened by the ylang, -ylang. If you just imagine, there's this yellow fruit that comes to mind. I'll leave a picture here if I remember it. But very warm, sweet almost along the lines of the Grossmith fragrances, if you know them, Hasanalana and Fulnana, for example, gives me similar vibes to when I wear this Caron. And Caron is, you know, very reasonably priced for the most part. So if you 
like that very high-end classy style, then check out Caron. They have some hidden gems. Next is a shout out fragrance. Shout out to Fragrance Journey 01 over here on YouTube. He has great taste and he recommended, I know that lots of people know about this one, but I'm a patch head, you know, I'm a self-proclaimed hashtag patch head. I love patchouli. This is a glorious, dark, chocolatey patchouli that you just wanna lick. I just love this patchouli fragrance. Not the best, most refined ingredients perhaps, not the most long lasting, but hello, it's cheap, you know? So just respray the fragrance. Or if you're trying to venture out into this new category, then maybe try out a cheaper fragrance in that category to see if you like that style. If of course you don't have access to those fragrances to smell them in person. And um, Reminiscence does some pretty good fragrances actually. I mean, they're not bad for the price. They're absolutely under the radar. And I bought this blind because it was so cheap and I liked the description. I also trust the nose who recommended it and I was pleasantly surprised. So try out this if you enjoy those dark patchoulis, Javoy style and don't mind respraying throughout the day. So next in this indulgent category, I'm gonna talk about fragrance that I've been quite obsessed with by Prosody. London. I'm so obsessed with this. I just get the urge to spray this out of nowhere. I just want to smell the scent. And Prosody London does 100% natural uh, perfumes, or it says 100% organic. It's an eau de parfum. I love the whole natural fragrance category. I'm always on the lookout for fragrances that have the magnificent scent, but use more natural ingredients, then I'm all for it. And I also find that sometimes if I overspray a fragrance, I will get a bit of a headache. And if I do so with a natural fragrance, I'm less likely to get those headaches. And you know, the whole chemical issue. But I digress. <laughs> Mocha Muscari from Prosody is my favorite from the line. And Prosody does uh, wonderful natural candles as well. So I have this one, which is one of my favorites. It's called Juniper Journey and it's a wonderful herbal crushed leaf uh, type of candle. So of course I needed to try their fragrances and I was pleasantly surprised with this one. This has this cinnamony, rich, comforting. Um, I kind of get this orange peel facet to this fragrance as well, but this is one of those, you know, very warming fragrances that people tend to gravitate towards in the fall time. A real snuggle, come hither type of fragrance. Apparently there's Udon here as well. For me, not really detectable, but I do get a deep woody uh, vibe mixed with that warmth. So check it out if you can. Prosody London, Mocha Muscari, 100% organic. So now on to the most indulgent fragrance in this lineup, one that is borderline cloying for me. <laughs> so I don't wear this uh, too often, but when I do, I absolutely am in love. And it is Kalamat Black by Arabian Oud. I have a full review of this fragrance as well. And um, yeah, this is just that ultimate epitome of warm, sensual, ambery, sweet, um, alluring, unisex, what is that type of fragrance with the mystique of the Middle Eastern style? Um, undetectable oud to me, borderline gourmand, but not overdoing it. And I'm just in love with Kalamut Black. I can tell you that I go around smelling lots and lots of fragrances and I could think of a handful of very high-end brands that would claim this type of scent and then put on a very heavy, hefty price tag. So for the price, absolutely great if you are into that indulgent, sweet, ambery, vanillic style fragrance with that Middle Eastern um, allure. And then I have a last honorary mention because it is, you know, moving towards scarf season and I always have a scent that I use on my scarves. Uh, when we come to this point, because I want my scarf to always smell good. I also often spray my coats so that they always have some sort of alluring scent. So Veronique Gabay, Gabay, I'll go with Gabay, 
is a French brand that uh, has this carefree bohemian yet luxe bohemian uh, vibe to it. And this is a fragrance that is a booster. So basically similar to the Molecule fragrances um, has that kind of, you know, like few compound uh, type of feel to it. Lots of Ambroxan probably, iso -E super or whatnot. Uh, I'm not a super nerd when it comes to ingredients like that. This is called Eau de la Nuit. They also have a daytime version that you can spray over anything and layer. I like layering fragrances and I'll often with many of these pick a corresponding oil that I will wear underneath the fragrance and so on so that I always am wearing a completely unique scent that I have somehow created. So Eau de la Nuit I spray on my scarves and because this is one that is made for layering it will go with anything that I have on otherwise and I think that that's just amazing. This is a you know one of those very appealing compliment getting whatever yada yada yada. I enjoy the scent of this and this was what stood out to me from the Veronique Gabay line. So do check them out. These bottles are so heavy, so luxe, but I love the versatility of this fragrance and it's probably a year round one, but it is, you know, leaning on that sexy evening vibe, which for me is all day long. So check them out, Veronique Gabay. So I hope you enjoyed this lineup, guys. Please let me know your thoughts down below. If you've tried any of these, what you think about them. I kind of like having a mixture of high and low so that everyone can participate. I don't only want to talk about, you know, the highest luxury of fragrances because that's not attainable to everyone. I'm on the lookout for more budget-friendly fragrances for you all, but it is very hard. Like, really, I feel like for the most part, you pay for what you get for. So I have plenty of more reviews coming up for you guys. I love going more in depth with each fragrance and telling you more about what it is that makes it special, not just reading out the notes list because, you know, what's that going to tell you? Please remember to subscribe, hit the bell so that you get a notification every time I leave a video. I try to do it once a week and stay tuned for more. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!